everyone. So glad you're here tonight. When we say you're, we're so glad you're here, I'll even say this. God is so happy you're here. And there's a fight, there's a fight, a fight for relationship. And this is what, what I mean by that is God is fighting for a relationship with you. And there's a scripture in the Bible that says that when we love the world and the things that are in the world, which is the lust of the eyes, the pride of life that I'm just prideful, or the lust of the flesh, desires that our, that our desires have, the love for the Father is not there. Uh, the, reason, the reason that God like really oppo opposes sin because sin separates you from him. It separates you from love. It separates you from your purpose. My wife can love me, but if I'm committing adultery, she could hate the adultery because it's destroying our relationship. God loves every single person here. And if you don't know this, you have a limited time on earth. And after that, you go into eternity. Many times we're living through life and there's an old saying, we put all our eggs in one basket. That we're thinking all there is, is now. Or all there is, is the weekend. There's even sayings like this, thank God it's Friday. We put God in the middle of our partying. We're thinking, I can't wait till it's Friday because we're gonna party. We're going to get faded out. We're going to do our thing. I just can't wait. And you can live your life that way, but you're forgetting that you're more than a momentary pleasure. You were created by God to be made whole by God, to live forever with him. I, as, as I go through life, I realize we're all the same. And that means we all want to be loved. We all want to have peace. Every one of us want to be happy. We all want to be accepted. That's just the reality. And this is a problem. We seek for our love and we seek for our acceptance and we seek for our identity in the wrong places. And that's why you could be a grown man gangbanging. Already 40 years, 50 years, and you're still identifying with your hood because you want to be accepted and you're thinking, that's the place I'm respected. That's the place I'm accepted. That's the place I got a name. Your identity is tied into your pride. And, and, and we have to be careful where we try to find our acceptance, our peace, our happiness in. This is true, that if you don't find it in God, you're going around in circles like a dog chasing after his tail and what that means is you do get momentary pleasure but this is what happens your pleasure starts fading away you start chasing after a high you used to have you don't get it anymore and if you're honest what used to turn you on doesn't turn you on anymore there's something that's dying within you your peace is dying your desire is dying your passion is dying your dreams are dying your character is dying and when we talk about the word of God, everything that we talk about today, I want you to get this is never to hurt you, it's to direct you. What, what God first is, is a father that cares for his children, that wants to lead them to an abundant life that they've been looking for. Come on, God loves you. And when we're talking about the last days and we're talking about, today we're going to continue talking about homosexuality. As we're bringing up this subject, it's, 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 you got to get this. If anybody should be talking about homosexuality, it should be every one of us, the church. We're going to talk about why we should talk about it today. This is one thing that's going to happen. By the time we're done, we're going to understand what the Bible says about it. The purpose of this message is never to condemn anyone. The purpose of this message is to make people whole, set them free, heal them. 
How many understand that make them whole and introduce them to a loving relationship with Jesus Christ that will, that's what's going to make you whole. It's a reality. Do you really think that a drug can make you whole? Like, man, if I just get more crack, uh, that'll make me whole. Do you really think sex will make you whole? If I just had more sex with more women, with more men, man, that would make me whole. How crazy that you would try to find your purpose and your identity even in your sexuality. It doesn't matter how much sex you have and how much highs you got and how much you get drunk and what you accomplish in life. You're still going to have an empty hole that only God can fill. And that's the reality. God loves you. And, and, and I'm going to pray, but this is what Jesus said. Jesus said, the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And when Jesus said that, he was identifying two types of lifestyles. One that's being led by a thief. And what ends up happening, you know your life is being led by the thief, which is the opposite of Jesus. When your life is dying, things are being taken from you. And you feel like everything's being destroyed. That means minus, 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 minus. There is no addition. Your joy is leaving. Your peace is leaving. Your, your, your vision is leaving. Your self-worth is going. What's happening? God wants you. Then Jesus said this, but I've come. Someone say, but I've come to give life in abundance. What he's saying is, I've come to give you the life you've been looking for, a rich and satisfying life. Let's give the Lord a hand that right now there's going to be an offer made today to everyone online, everyone that's here, and the offer is abundant, full, rich, satisfying life that you're looking for. So today we're going to pray, and I'm going to pray that God's Spirit touches us, that we'll be ready to receive what God says. God's just trying to lead you to a better life. And if you have sons or daughters that are dealing with homosexuality, I want you to know, parents, that God loves them and wants to save them. But you're not going to save them by ignoring what they're dealing with. You understand that? You're not going to help them by ignoring it. We're, we're living in a world like we want to just put everything underneath the rug and hopefully everything goes away. It's not going away. We, we need to learn how to confront, address issues, talk about things so we could, come on, get some understanding, get some truth, and, and allow God to come in and transform people's lives. You can never help someone get set free if you don't want to talk about nothing. We're going to talk about it in the church, and I'll tell you why, because we love people. Father, we just thank you. Holy Spirit, have your way. One day we'll be in eternity. Some will be with you for eternity. And the truth is some will be in hell for eternity. We want everyone to be with you. Especially our, the ones we know, our friends and family, our loved ones, our children, our moms, our dad, our cousins, our, our co-workers. You put us in their lives to let them know there's good news. You can be transformed. You can be whole. You can have peace that surpasses all our standards. It's a joy that only God can give you. And I forgive us, Father, for not mentioning you enough. There's all kinds of propaganda out there for so many different causes and issues. And it seems like your church is more silent than ever. And we have the answer. So we just ask forgiveness for being silent. And Father, we ask you, Lord, Holy Spirit, make us bold. Not just bold, careless boldness, but love and boldness. Because we love people. We just thank you for freedom, awareness, open eyes to see, like, how much you love them. And, and that you have an option, an alternative. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. So let's dive into this. We're in the last days, and we've been talking about a timeline. I just want to go over the timeline real quick. If they could just put over the end times timeline on the screen so we can see exactly where we're at. Um, the current church age is where we're at. This represents Jesus coming to earth. When he came to earth, he resurrected from the dead. The, the disciples saw Jesus 
resurrect and ascend to the Father. They stood there watching, waiting for him to come back. And the angels that were there said, why are you staring up in the air? The same way you saw him leave, he's coming back. So the angel said, he's coming back, but it's time to get to work. Stop staring and get to the assignment. In the church age, now the next step is his, his return. And it's going to come in two stages. One is the rapture. The rapture is, we don't know when that day's coming, but we talked about signs of those days coming. And, and, and part of it would be earthquakes. And if you want to get caught up on, on the signs of the end time before Jesus comes back, it would be a, an increase in earthquakes. Pandemics like we're seeing today. Um, and one of the things we covered last week, it would be like the days of Noah and the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. There'd be a lack of awareness that judgment is coming. People would be living life, business as usual, and not aware that Jesus was coming back or that judgment was coming on the earth. So Jesus coming back, and this rapture day is when, if it, if it happened right now, every single believer in Jesus Christ, and that those that are saved, those that are born again, those that have been forgiven of their sins, those that have placed their faith in Jesus as their only Lord and Savior, they will be caught up in the air with them. That means they would disappear here and they would fly and be with the Lord forever and ever. So there will be a great disappearance on the earth. A great disappearance is, is going to come pretty soon. And that means believers will disappear from the earth. That's when Jesus comes back for his people. The second part of it, the second coming, is when this is, this is a seven-year tribulation, then the second coming after that. Then the world is going to go through a seven-year tribulation where Satan, the Antichrist, is going to start a one-world government and he's going to rule the entire earth claiming that he's the Messiah or the Savior, and many people will be deceived because he'll do signs and wonders, but this will be a time of great tribulation, great praying and suffering like the world has never seen in the seven-year tribulation, and we'll be covering that pretty soon. But right after the seven-year tribulation is the battle of Armageddon and the second coming of Jesus Christ where Jesus actually touches the ground for the second time. He came, he walked on earth, and the next time he's coming, not as a Savior, he's coming as a judge. A day of judgment is coming. Now, today we're talking about homosexuality. And, we, and, and the question is, is why discuss homosexuality and the last days? Why even discuss this? Number one, because we care. In Philippians 2.4, it says care about them as much as you care about yourself. The word care is a state of mind in which one is troubled or concerned for. The provision of what is needed for the well-being or protection of a person or to have affection for. The reason we bring up this subject is because, because we care for the homosexual LGBTQ community. The highest form of hate is indifference. I'll say it again. The highest form of hate is what? For the church to, to turn a blind eye to the rise of the LGBT community... Um, and not address it and give them the good news of Jesus Christ is a crime of the highest proportions. That means if I say I don't want to discuss it because I could potentially offend someone or I don't want to be rejected, it's kind of like seeing someone that's tied to a railroad track and a train is coming and you walk by and you can help them and you say nothing. The church literally in these last days has been practicing indifference. What that means, I don't want to discuss it. I want to put a blind eye to it. And really what you're saying when you don't want to discuss it is I don't care about you. I don't care about your life. I don't care about your pain. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care if you go to hell. I don't care if you go to heaven. I don't care if you're depressed. I don't care if you're suicidal. I just don't care. The church cares. We care. And because we care, we're going to do everything we can to show our care by addressing things. The word indifference means a lack of interest or concern. Unimportant or disdain or contempt or hatred. Just think about that. 
the highest form of hatred is I don't care about you. It's not like I'm mad at you and screaming at you. That's not the highest form of hatred. Hatred. The highest form of hatred is I don't care if you die. I don't care. I don't care good or bad. What happens? See, you're not even on my radar. I don't care. A church that does not have discourse with the LGBTQ community is practicing the highest form of hate. I don't care. Second reason. Second reason why we discuss. We're discussing homosexuality in the last days because the LGBTQ community is hurting. It's hurting. Stats show that the homosexual community is not gay. What I mean by that is they're not really happy. Stats show that the homosexual community is more depressed and suicidal, more depressed and suicidal than any other segment of our society. Now, I want you to get this. The doctors can't help. You can't take a pill and solve emotional turmoil. All you could do is begin to maybe downplay it a little bit, numb it, but you can't heal it. There's only one person that could heal and set us free from deep depression and suicide. Because that is an emotional hurt and pain that only God can heal. One of the things that Jesus said, I've come to heal the brokenhearted. If there's a segment of our society that's hurting and broken and we say nothing, we got the cure and we're going to let them die? Not on our watch. According to the National Alliance of Mental Illness, LGBT, LGBTQ adults are more than twice as likely as heterosexual adults to experience a mental health condition. Transgender individuals are nearly four times as likely as heterosexuals to experience a mental, mental health condition. LGBTQ youth are more than twice as likely to feel suicidal and more than four times as likely to attempt suicide than heterosexual youth. And it doesn't get better when, we get, when, when they get older. 48% of transgender adults report that they've considered suicide in the last year. Compared to 4% of the overall U.S. population. And we're talking about at least 10, 12 times as much. In 2019, they're not only, when we're dealing, when we're dealing with, mental illness and emotional pain on the inside, who's going to fix that? The only one that could fix that is someone that could go on the inside and fix you from the inside out. Now, when you're hurting, you're going to do everything you can to fix yourself because you want to be happy. But don't ever think that you're going to fix your bodily appearance and somehow fix your emotional Pain inside. So what's happening with the transgender community and transsexuals, this is what they're experiencing. I am going ahead and having the surgeries, but after it's all said and done, on the inside, I'm still hurting, I'm still depressed, and I thought it was going to fix me. That's sad. And if we could help, come on, if we could help. Come on, church, if we could help. Come on, if we could help. Come on, the psychiatrists can help. The psychologists can't help. And that's why they're saying we don't have any hope. But the church can help. Because only God, come on, could take away depression and replace it with peace and joy. Come on, only God can take away fear and anxiety and, and replace it with faith and strength. God could do that. And the third reason why we're discussing homosexuality in the last days. And, and as we discuss this subject, I, I, this is the most important reason because we desire for the LGBTQ community to be saved and have eternal life. I love that. One of my cousins practiced homosexuality his whole life. 
uh, he ended up getting AIDS, and, and when he got AIDS, it was before they had a lot of help with medis- medication, he began to spiral downward pretty quick. My cousin ended up being blind, alone in a hospital bed in severe pain. We prayed for my cousin, not only for healing, but we prayed that my cousin would be saved. And I want you to get know this, that there's no sin that God can't forgive you of, can't save you of and give you eternal life. Nobody is out of the reach of God's grace and mercy. I remember when my cousin called our house. He was blind in a hospital bed with no one there. He got a dream one night. Jesus visited him in his hospital bed and he saw that if he died in the condition that he was in, he would not go to heaven. He called my mother up and she says, Mama, I want to go to heaven. I want to be saved. I want to be forgiven of my sins. And on that hospital bed, my cousin, after living a whole life of not including God in his life, like many people live, not including God, God, I got good news for you. He gave his life to Jesus. He was born again. And one day, my cousin, I'll see him for eternity because someone told him that there's a Savior that loved him, that would forgive him and give him eternal life. My cousin died blind. But he had some great sight. He was happy. He was joyful because even though his body was dying, his spirit was alive. And he had a future that he had in faith in Jesus Christ. Now, everyone needs to be saved, including a homosexual. So when we say a homosexual needs to be saved, I'm just saying including because everybody needs to be saved. Like, they're not a special category. We're all sinners that need to be saved. Come on. Look what the Bible says. Everyone needs to be saved. In Romans 10, 13, it says, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Everyone who what? Who gets saved? Everyone that calls. But how can they call on him to save them unless they believe in him? The idea is, how can anyone call on Jesus to save them if they're not even, they don't even believe in him? And the next question is, how can they believe in him if they've never heard about him? Never heard about him. All they've heard is what the media says. They've heard what, what, what social media says. But it's crazy. They haven't heard what God says. They haven't heard what the church says. They haven't heard what you say yet. And no one's going to get saved unless you're willing to put your life on the line. I say, Mama, brother, sister, I love you so much that I'm going to give you good news. That if you call on the name of Jesus, You could be saved, you could be set free, you could be made whole, you could become a brand new person. What you're looking for is not found in any sinful lifestyle, it's found in Jesus. Look what he says, but how can they call on him unless they believe in him? How can they believe in him if they've never heard about him? And how can they hear about him unless someone tells them? And how will anyone go and tell them without being sent? So why does the scripture say, this is why the scriptures say, how beautiful are the feet of the messengers who bring the good news. The word saved, everyone needs to be saved. This is what a word saved means. Rescue and save from danger, destruction, suffering, and judgment. There's, there's There's an implicit statement here. That every one of us without the Lord are in danger. Every one of us apart from the Lord are suffering. Every one of uh, of us apart from the Lord are in self-destruction mode. And also, every one of us apart from the Lord 
will experience judgment. Tomorrow, I'm doing a funeral. A young man named Anthony. I was driving to church at 6.30 in the morning. It was on a Wednesday, driving to church. And I see an accident. I'm driving around it. I don't see any police cars, no ambulances there. I thought it was a little light fender bender. But when I turned around the corner, it was a young man that was on a motorcycle that hit a car head on, just T-boned it. And he was bleeding on the side of the road. I stopped my car, turned my car around, did a U-turn, went running towards him. The police weren't there. The ambulance weren't there. Say, Pastor, what would stop you and make you turn your car around and kneel down with him while he's bleeding? Because I know this, that I don't care what kind of life that he's led. He might have been involved in drugs his whole life. He might have been in sin his whole life. But anyone that calls upon the name of the Lord can be saved. And if I got an answer, how can I just walk by him and let him die? That's not love. So I kneeled down by, beside him and I began to share with him. I didn't know his name. I go, young man. It looks like you're ready to die. I don't know what your future holds, but I got, I got some good news for you. It doesn't matter how you live. There's a God that sent his son to die for your sins. You could be forgiven right now if you just call upon the name of the Lord. I go, right now, I'm going to lead you in a prayer. He was breathing. <sighs> An hour later, I get a call from one of the girls that was there. And she goes, I didn't even know. That young man was my cousin. I, and he died. His mother called me a day later. And I talked to her. And today, tomorrow I'm going to do that funeral. All of this to let you know that if no one says anything, we're letting people die on our watch. And we're letting people be destroyed on our watch. We're letting people be suicidal on our watch. We're letting people be hopeless on our watch. And the church is scared to say anything. This is good news. The reason we do it, because there's an answer for the homosexual community. There's an answer, come on, for the gangbanger. There's an answer to those who are depressed. Call on Jesus and be rescued. It means to make whole, restore to health, and heal from disease. Do you mean that if I call on Jesus, I could be healed, and I could be whole, and I could be set free? Yes. And I could have eternal life? Yes. And I could become a new person? Yes. And I could have a new beginning? And I could be accepted and I could be loved with an unconditional love. Yes. That's God's love. So now, I want to discuss for a few moments, how does someone become a homosexual? And I've done some study on it, but I also have had a lot of experience helping people get saved and healed and set free from every walk of life, including the homosexual community. I believe our church is called in these last days to reach out to a hurting group that most churches are ignoring because they don't know how to deal with them. We are not going to be intimidated from helping someone. We love them. Come on, we love so now, how does someone become a homosexual? The first one, and I've, I've seen it, is sexual molestation. Not everybody, but sexual. We become one with the person. There's a spiritual principle. You become one with the person you're having sex with. And the devil knows the power of sex. There's a spiritual union and bond that happens when you have sex with anybody. What I've learned about sex is you're not just having sex with the person you're having sex with. You're having sex with every person they've ever had sex with. 
and what, they're ha what they have, they're transferring to you. And that's why you could have sex with someone and all of a sudden after you have sex with them, you feel like there's a spirit of fear on you. You never were fearful. You feel connected to them and you know this, that this relationship is a bad dysfunctional relationship. But you're finding yourself attracted to them even though they're abusing you. Because when you have sex with someone, there's a, there, there's a joining that happens in the spiritual realm. And, and, and 1 Corinthians 6.16, it says, don't you know that anyone who is joined to someone who is sleeping around is one body with that person? The scripture says the two will become one. So that means if I choose to have sex with someone, I'm choosing to bond with them. But we're not just exchanging fluids. Many times we're exchanging spirits. This is what they found out. Gay men and lesbian women reported a significantly higher rate of child molestation than did heterosexual men and women. Check this out. 80% of males who were molested regarded the molester as being gay or bisexual. And I want you to understand, this, this survey was done with bisexual men, lesbian women, the LGBTQ community. And they found out that they were molested by those who were homosexual and bisexual. 94% of females who were molested, by fe were molested by females regarding their predators as being lesbian or bisexual. And what he, what the, the, the ladies were saying basically our percentage are even higher. If I was molested, I was molested by someone that was lesbian or bisexual. Now this is what they also found out. This is the conclusion. The majority of gay men and lesbians who had been homosexually molested reported that this molestation had an impact on their sexual orientation. The majority of the victims of the sexual molestation assumed the sexual orientation of the predator. So it ended up happening after the molestation, they assumed the or sexual orientation of their predator. Now, if you're dealing with homosexuality here or online and you were actually sexually molested, I have good news for you. You can be healed of that molestation and you could be set free for what they transfer to you. Come on, let's. How many know that God is bigger than your molester? Come on, give God credit. He's bigger than your molester. If your molester could transfer a sexual orientation, then God can deliver you from whatever the molester deposited in you because we serve a God who sets people free and could uproot, come on, a bad seed that was planted in your life. Number two, how does someone become homosexual? Exposure. Our culture is saturated, saturated with sexual content that was once considered, what was once considered risque for children and social media has accelerated the spread of pornography to young viewers. 42% of children between 10 and 17 have viewed, viewed pornography online. The American Academy of Pred uh, Pediatrics reports that in the, in the United States. I want you to think about this. How can you expose children to pornography without corrupting their mind? This, I want you to understand, this is basic marketing. Whatever you expose people to, they build desire for. How many understand? Come on. Whatever you expose yourself people to, you build desire for. Now, the problem is if I'm being exposed to content like pornography that has bisexuality, has everything attached to it, what it does is awakens desire. What does awaken? It awakens. Now, what awaken, awaken or gives them a desire? No. I want you to understand every single person has the ability to be sinful and in any way you want to be sinful in. Any person here can be bisexual, 
can be homosexual, can be lustful, can be addicted to porn, can be angry, can be violent. And I'll tell you why. Because you were born with a sin nature. But the, the devil already knows that if I could expose him, I could awaken a desire. And after desire comes, comes action. Now, the worst thing about a sexual desire, it comes with pleasure. And once you give in to the pleasure, you become addicted to the pleasure. You become a slave to the pleasure. And you don't watch it. You make your pleasure your identity. Are we, come on, are you still with me? In 1 Corinthians 6, 16, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. In 1 Corinthians 15, 33, it says this. Don't be fooled by those who say such things. For bad company corrupts good, good character. He goes, don't be deceived that you're exposing yourself to bad company or bad content or sexual morality or pornography that it will not corrupt you or maybe even convert you. Someone say convert. That word convert means to turn to another or a particular use or purpose to divert from the original or intended use. Now, there's a huge marketing campaign to expose our children and expose you to more and more illicit content. And the more we get exposed to it, the more appetite we have for it, and the more we accept it. We are sexualizing our children, and after we sexualize them by, by exposing them, we're normalizing what should be risque or should be resisted. Look at this. During sex ed class, for first graders, Sex ed class for first graders, they should be learning ABCs. They don't even know their ABCs right yet. They should be learning addition and multiplication. But we're living in a world that's sexualizing or exposing St. Rote knows basic marketing. Expose, awaken desire, they're going to act on it and they become a slave to it. Look what he says. During sex ed class for first graders at New York private school, a teacher showed a cartoon video that explains how it feels good for girls and boys to touch their private parts. The video concludes that it's okay to touch yourself and, and see how different body parts feel. Hmm. It took the work of vigilant vigilant parents to remove a video that is entirely inappropriate for six-year-olds who should be learning how to read and write, not to how to masturbate. And I'm telling you, if you're not aware as a parent, this is what's happening right now. There is a ploy to expose our children to elicit sexual desires to convert them. Now, there was a video here, and I want you to understand. As we show this video, this video is from the gay men's choir. And they're literally saying, this is our agenda. Let's take a look at it. Disney behind the scenes I'm is sorry, thinking. wrong video. Watch this. Robert. As we celebrate pride on the progress we've made over these past years, there's still work to be done. So to those of you out there who are still working against equal rights, we have a message for you. You think we're sinful. You fight against our rights. You say we all lead lives you can't respect. But you're just frightened. You think that we'll corrupt your kids if our agenda goes unchecked. It's funny, just this once, you're correct. We'll convert your children. Happens bit by bit, quietly and subtly, and you will barely notice it. Now, I'm not showing that 
to put down the homosexual community. I'm just showing that there's an agenda. But also, I want you to get this, is that it, we're, our children are being directly targeted by corporations, media. Schools are seeking to normalize sexual content that is inappropriate and confusing for our young audiences. In many instances, the content could be considered pornographic material, and some have described the process of normalizing as the first steps in grooming our children for sexual acts. Disney is involved. And one of the executives for Disney, I want to show that, that video right now, She's actually saying, I'm doing everything I can to include LGBTQ content because we want to reach the children. Take a look at this. Disney behind the scenes is thinking. Watch this. Roberts and like the, the, our leadership over there has been so welcoming to like my like not at all secret gay agenda. And so like I, I feel like I felt like it was, I mean like, Maybe it was that way in the past, but I guess, like, something must have happened in the last, like, like they were turning it around, they're going hard. And then all that, like, momentum that I felt, like, that sense of I don't have to be afraid to, like, let's have these two characters kiss. Let's, in the background, this, like, I was just, wherever I could, just basically adding queerness to, like, the, if you see anything queer in the show. I'm proud of but, like, I, I just was like, no one would stop me and no one was trying to stop me. And, and the idea is there's no way that we're going to expose ourselves to content without building desire for it. And since there's a rise in exposure to content, it's, it's actually, un, we're understanding this, that the more exposure to LGBT content leads to more people identifying as LGBTQ. You guys understand that? It's just exposure. And Saint tried this with Eve. He exposed her to the apple and just started showing her, look at the apple, it's good for you, or whatever fruit that was. Look at it, man, it's good. And the Bible says that she was convinced, it built desire, and maybe she make, began to act on it. Nothing has ever changed. It's the oldest trick in the book. If I could expose them to whatever I want them to get involved with, I'll build desire in them. They'll begin to normalize it. They'll begin to accept it. And before they know it, they'll become it. I know it's getting quiet in here. I'm going to tell you, I love you. And I'm just saying, be careful that Satan has not marketed you and converted you. And what he's trying to do is, is make your sexual desire your identity. And he's trying to steal the true joy and happiness that God has for you. All we're doing is just talking about just basic how this happens. And it can happen with any content. You guys understand that. And the last thing. There's last two things here I want to just mention. Matter of fact, ah, I want to go into the last one because I want to know the question, can you be born gay? I really got to hit that. And Christians are like, I don't know, can you? You're going to be surprised what I'm going to say. Yes. Well, how can you be born gay? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to qualify it. You could be born, you're born, I want you, you could be born gay with that desire. Because you're born, I want you to get this, a sinner. You could be born with a bent for any sin. You could be born with a desire. That's why if you're an alcoholic, what they try to do is look at your family line. It says, was there any alcoholics in your family? Because they're realizing that behavior actually goes into your DNA. And because your family has been alcoholics, it could actually be in you when you're born. A bent towards it. Now let's look at this scripture. And look what it says in Psalm 51. We are all born sinners. Look what it says. For I was born a sinner, yes, from the moment my mother conceived me. Anyone could have a bent towards any sin. That's any sin, including homosexuality. But just because you were born a sinner doesn't mean you need to stay that way. 
Now, I want you to get this. This message means nothing if you can't be born again. Because every single sinner in this house is addicted to their sin. But you'll never get set free until you realize and call it what it is. It is a sin. I know it's a sin. I, I, I knew it was. I know I'm depressed. I know I'm hopeless. And I'm so glad that finally someone's addressing this issue. And if there's a way for me to be set free and be made a new person and have some joy and have peace and have eternal life and be accepted by God, I want that. Look at Ephesians 2, 2. It says, you went along, look at this, with the crowd and were just like all the others. I want you to know he's talking to us. We went along with the crowd and we're just like all the others, full of sin, obeying Satan. The mighty prince of the power of the air, who has at work right now in the hearts of those who are against the Lord. Just think about that. That actually, sin could have influence on our hearts. And he's working in our hearts and make us against the Lord, against the word, against truth. It could happen. As a matter of fact, we were all like that. All of us used to be just as they are. Our lives expressing the evil within us. Doing every wicked thing that our passions or our evil thoughts might lead us into. So it's saying that we have passions, we have little evil thoughts. And there was a time that we were just led by our passions, we were led by our lusts, and we just did whatever they told us to do. And that's every single one of us. And it says, and we're under God's anger just as everyone else. But God is so rich in mercy. He loved us so much that even though we were spiritually dead and doomed, by our sins, he gave us back our lives again when he raised Christ from the dead. Only by this undeserved favor have we been saved. I want you to get this. We used to be that way, but it's given hope to every sinner that has been driven by a passion, driven by a lust, driven by an addiction. That you could live that, you could have lived that way, but there's hope. You could be saved. You could be made brand new. You could be healed. You could have peace again. You could have eternal life. And I want, this is the good news. When we are born again, God gives us a new life and new desires. That's the trip. When you're born again, God gives you new desires and a new, I mean, new heart and new desire, new life and a new what? That's why there's people here that were strung out on drugs their whole life. And somehow they came into this room. They were homeless. They were stealing. Their mom was a drug addict. Their dad was a drug addict. And they come in here and they said, I can't overcome the drugs. But God is saying, come on, call on me. I'll help you overcome the drugs. And I'll give you a new life. And I'll give you new desires. And you'll be happier and higher than that high could ever give you. Now, I want you to get this. You'll never know until you try. Do you understand what Jesus is saying? I just want to save you. I want to give you new life. I don't want to condemn you. What you're searching for is in me. But look at this. Ezekiel 36, 26. And this is what God promises. I'll give you a new heart. I love that. I will give you new and righteous desires. And I'll put a new spirit within you. I'll take out your stony hearts of sin and give you new hearts of love. I love it. Man, that sounds really good. You can change my heart. You can give me new desires. You can put your spirit in me. I want it. And let's end it with the scripture. In 1 Corinthians 
9, 11. And all we're saying is we could be saved. We could be born again. We could become new people. We could get a new nature. Everyone needs to be saved. And everyone's born a sinner. And we all have desires that are unrighteous. Come on, everybody. But look what the Bible says. Don't you realize that those who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom of God? Don't you realize that if you're doing wrong and you don't admit you're wrong and turn from your wrong, you will not go to heaven? You will not, you will not, by the, when your life is over on this earth, you're going into your worst part and stay your best part. You will not go to a place where there's no more death, where there's no more pain, where there's no suffering. You're going to go to your place of of greatest pain and suffering and regret. And you'd be thinking, why didn't I listen to that pastor? What a shame would it be that we pass by the message. Look what it says. Those who indulge, look at this, in, in, in sexual sin or worship idols or commit adultery or male prostitutes or practice homosexuality, or are thieves, or greedy people, or drunkards, or abusive, or cheap people. None of these will inherit the kingdom of God. Some of you were once like that. That's the good news. Come on. You, I want you to get this. It's, not, it, it's given a list, and homosexuality is in that list, but it's just one thing that's mentioned. It's not the main thing that's mentioned. It's just a group. But God just calls it sin. And it doesn't mean that you can't be set free from it. You can't be forgiven of it. But th those that practice it understand this. They will not inherit the kingdom of God. Some of you were once like that, but you were cleansed. You were made holy. You were made right with God. By calling on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ by the Spirit of God. Now, we're going to end it here. But I want you to think about this. That no matter if you've been sexually molested or just the massive exposure made you question who you are and your sexual identity. And you're saying, I'm empty, I'm struggling, I was just trying different things. I just want to be accepted and loved and I'm thinking maybe I could have been exposed and, and built a desire for it. Or maybe you're saying, I know I was born that way. Right now, love is knocking at your heart's door. I'm going to dismiss it in just a second. But love is knocking at your heart's door. And there's going to be a day that this life on earth is done. And for me, I want you to get this, for me to bring up this subject, I have no joy bringing up any subject about sin unless there's an answer. There's no joy I get here. But my greatest joy would be, it's just like my cousin, that one day I'd see you in heaven forever. And that you could be saved today. Now, when we're talking about any sin, all I'm saying is God's knocking at your heart's door. And when it's knocking at your heart's door is love. God's not trying to take something away from you. He's trying to give you something that you've been looking for. He's a father that loves you. And he has nothing but the best for you. If right now you have a drug addiction... Give it up. You're settling for a secondary high or happiness. It's not, it'll never make you full. If you're in an adulterous affair here, it's time for you to go back home to your wife and, and find, come on, go back home, restore your family. Be willing to give up the adultery so you can have a new life. God will forgive you. You can have a new start. Today's your day. If you feel like, man, I'm a drunk. Every one of us are slaves to something. Don't let your sin become your identity. 
Jesus did not come for a whole bunch of perfect people. Come on. He came for a whole bunch of sinners like you and me. And he wants to cleanse you. He wants to make you right in his sight. He wants to give you eternal life. All you got to do is call on Jesus and you come the way you are. Or I'm going to make the call. If you've been involved in, a sex, in, in, in homosexuality and you're saying, Pastor, and, and I understand this. If you don't want to respond, I want you to get this. You don't want to respond. This is, this is the idea. Is that maybe your faith isn't high enough yet. But I got good news for you. If you feel like God's talking to your heart, don't you believe the lie that you can't change. Because God could change anybody. Don't you believe the lie that you've messed up too much and you can never turn around. But if God's knocking at your heart's door, and I can't save anybody, but if as you've gone through this, you've kind of gone through some inventory, and you're starting to think, man, I am suicidal. I am depressed. I'm, I'm tired of living this lifestyle. I'm brokenhearted. I feel hopeless. And God's saying, come on. Please come to me. Don't do another round of the sin. Come to me. I love you. I want to save you. I want you to be with me for eternity. Let's all stand up. I'm going to pray right now. Father, touch our hearts. Father, even if we're born a sinner, which we all are, we can be born again today. Have a new life. If today you're saying, Pastor, I want to give my life to Jesus. I want a new start. I want a new beginning. This is your day to say yes. Come the way you are. Come on, come with your hurt. Come with your pain. Give your life to Jesus. If you're saying, Pastor, I'm not sure that on that day of judgment, I'll inherit the kingdom of heaven. I want to make sure before I leave this earth that I'll inherit the kingdom of heaven. I want to make sure. I want to be saved. I want to be forgiven. I don't care what the sin is. I want you to come up here real quick. Come on, just come up here real quick. I want a new start. I feel like God's talking. I feel like I can't wait. I can't wait. God's love is calling you right now. Come on, it hasn't been easy. But come on, you, you stayed here this long and God loves you. God's saying, you've tried everything. Give your life to me. I'll save you. I'll give you a new life. Come on, today's your day. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand. Come on, people are still coming. Okay, now. I'm going to give you one more opportunity. Because I don't want anybody to leave here without, be, without being whole. Now, if you're struggling with suicidal thoughts, you're depressed. Why leave here depressed and with suicidal thoughts? Come and be saved. Come and be made whole. Come on, if you're struggling with depression, suicidal thoughts, severe anxiety, I want you to leave your seat. Today's going to be your day of miracles. Come on, you're going to realize you're going to wake up happy tomorrow and you're going to say, what happened? And God's going to say, I healed you. I set you free. I gave you eternal life. If you've been watching pornography, and I, I'm, I'm addressing things because the more you watch it, the more addicted you get to it. And you could be a believer just getting addicted to something that you keep feeding and the desire keeps growing. And, and that desire can grow into any desire. And now you're feeling like, man, I think I might even be bisexual now. And I, I understand that could happen to anybody. Because the more you expose yourself to content, the more your desires build within you. But if you're saying, Pastor, I want to be set free from lust today. They say, well, people are going to know I'm dealing with lust. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you something. Most people are dealing with lust. So like, oh, I can't believe they're dealing with lust. Stop being a hypocrite. Come on, you know you've been dealing with lust too. But if you're dealing with lust and you want to set free, come on. Today's your day. I want you to leave your seat. I want you to come up real quick. Come on. If you're dealing with lust, come on, get rid of it today. Let's be honest. Let's let it go. Let's get set free tonight. Come on, this is your day. It's not going to go away.
Come on, you got to make up your mind. I don't care what anybody thinks. I want to be free. I want to be whole tonight. Okay. All right, let's make sure. I don't want to miss anybody. Come on, I don't want to miss anybody. Come on, today's your day. I don't want to miss anybody. It's okay. It doesn't matter. Come on, who doesn't need some salvation? Come on, who doesn't need some wholeness and freedom tonight? Everybody does. Okay. Today's your day. And one more thing. If you've been sexually molested, and I know these are tough subjects, but all I know is if we don't expose stuff, we never get healed of it. If you've been sexually molested and you want to be set free from the desires that were implanted in you also, you need to forgive your molester. Because until you forgive them, you'll never be free. Come on, you've been hiding it and you're saying, I'm mad, I just hope it goes away. It's not going away until you finally address it. But if you've been molested and you're saying, man, I don't care if you're a guy or a girl, I'm, I'm, I'm having a hard time finding it. Almost anybody that hasn't been molested. But if that's you and you're saying, I want to deal with it today. I want to expose it. I want to get rid of it. No more shame. I want to get sea healed and set free. Come up here real quick. Come on. If you need to forgive your molester, you want to get set free. Come on. For, free from that past thing, trauma that hurts you. Come on. It's your day to get set free. Come on. They're coming up. Someone's going to get set free. Those plants that the enemy's put in there are going to be eliminated. Come on, I want to make sure I don't miss anybody else. Anybody else? Come on, they're still coming. Come on, church. Come on, there's people who molested when they were little kids, little girls, little boys. All right. Come on, how many church? church is it worth it? Come on, I'm not going to count right now. Come on, we have... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two. Anybody else? Come on, anybody else? There's thirty-two people that are giving their lives to Jesus tonight. Come on, Jesus is gonna save them, set them free. 33. Come on, anybody else? Now, we're going to pray. I might have miscounted. There's probably some more people up here, but we're going to pray. And as we pray, there's a promise. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Who calls upon the name of the Lord? Sinners like you and me. That's who calls on the name of the Lord. Sinners like you, come on, they're still coming. Come on, someone's still coming. Today's their day, come on. Someone's going to get set free from depression. Someone's going to get set free from suicide. Someone's going to get set free from self-destruction. Someone's going to be healed today. Come on, church, are you with me? Come on, are you, church, are you with me on this? Why do we bring this stuff up? Because we love people. Okay, today's your day. And if you're part of the homosexual community, LGBT community, I'm going to let you know, I'm not going anywhere. I love you no matter what. We as a church love you no matter what. God loves you. God loves you. We love you no matter how you look at this. But I want you to be in heaven with me. I love you. And if someone cares about you, they're going to share what they know. Do you think this, this teaching is not to make anybody upset? The goal is not to offend. The goal is not to pick on anybody. The goal is to save you, make you whole, make you complete, and let you know that God loves you and we love you. That's it. That's it. And if you get to know me, you're going to find out I absolutely love you. If you want to talk to me after service, you're struggling with something, I would love to talk with you. I love you. I'll stay here all night with you to make sure that you know that God loves you and today's your day. I'll be here all day, all night if I have to. I don't care. We love you. And okay, we're going to pray. Are you guys ready to serve Jesus? Come on, are you ready to serve Jesus? Come on, everybody up here, are you ready to serve Jesus? Are you ready to live for Jesus? There has to be a day 
that you're done with your old life to follow Jesus. You got to break up with your sin so you could, so you could be united with Christ. Is your day. Re repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I know I'm a sinner and I need you to save me. I can't save myself. Set me free from all addiction to sin. Give me a new heart with new desires that are right. I forgive everyone that has hurt me, abused me. I forgive them. Jesus, I repent of my sins and I ask you, Lord, to save me. You suffered. You died. You were punished for the wrong I've done so that I could be forgiven, be set free, and be filled, filled with love. Fill my heart with your Holy Spirit. Heal me. Depression, I command you to go now. Anxiety, suicide, go now. I accept freedom. Who the sun sets free is free indeed. Today, I'm a new person, saved with new desires. Fill my heart with joy, strength, faith, and love, Lord. I thank you, Jesus. I'll never be the same. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand. If you need prayer, come on, stay. I want to make sure we pray for you. Sunday we're doing, this Saturday we're doing an outreach at our PAC Center on E Street. You can get a flyer after service says, and this Sunday, you don't want to miss it. We have Holy Wars at 9 o'clock in the morning. Holy Wars 1, 2, and 3. Love to see you there. If you need prayer, don't go that way. Come this way. Have a great, wonderful night. We love you. We believe in you. God bless you. You need prayer. Come on up this way. We want to pray. Make sure we pray with you.